appropriately. For example, such as this examination of a lump or a swelling. So in cases, if there is a lump or a swelling present, the history should be taken under the following headings, the duration, since when the swelling has been first noticed and the mode of onset, what was the pattern of the onset, was it sudden or was it gradual? And then the other symptoms associated with the lump such as pus discharge, pain, the nature of the pain, the site of the pain and the time of onset of the pain. And then progression of the swelling, the exact site of the swelling, if it is associated with fever or not, presence of another lump or a secondary lump in association with the swelling, the secondary changes that has occurred after the onset of the swelling, impairment of the function associated with this, recurrence of the swelling, in case if the swelling was earlier treated then has it reoccurred or, or is it the first time that the swelling has occurred which is the primary swelling, loss of body weight and past history. The local examinations will include inspection in which the extent of the swelling should be noted both in the horizontal and the vertical direction, the color of the swelling. For example, in cases where there is hemangiomas, the color of the swelling will be more of red to purple and in cases of ranula, it will be more bluish in color. The shape of the swelling may be oval shaped, pear shaped, kidney shaped, spherical or irregular in shape. Then the size of the swelling should be measured in its longest diameter. The surface of the swelling should be inspected for such as in cases of squamous cell carcinoma. It will be cauliflower surface and irregular numerous branches will be present in cases if the swelling is due to papilloma. Then the attachment of the swelling should be noted which may be pedunculated or sessile. In cases of pedunculated swelling, the swelling will be mobile and in cases where the swelling is sessile, it will be more attached to the surface of the skin and it will be difficult to move it or it will not be movable at all. Then the number of the swellings present. So in cases of neurofibromatosis, multiple granular swelling, there are multiple swellings present. And if there is lipoma or dermoid sit, then only a solitary or single swelling will be present. Pulsation should be checked for that is swelling arising from arteries or pulsatile. Example is aneurysm and vascular growth such as in carotid body tumor. And another point is that the swelling which lie superficial to the artery or, or is closely approximated to the artery, pulsation will be transmitted or transmitted pulsation will be present. And the swellings which originate from the arterial walls, in these kind of swellings, the expensile pulsations will be present. In transmitted pulsation, the pulsation is transmitted through other tissues. And you can make this pulsation disappear if you can move the swelling away from the aorta. Whereas in cases of expensile swelling, which is present in cases of abdominal aortic Aneurysm. Fingers will diverge from the swelling. When you keep the fingers on the swelling, they will diverge from each other and you cannot make this pulsation disappear. How will you note that whether the pulsation is transmitted or expensive? In transmitted pulsation, when you keep two fingers on the swelling, both of these fingers will be elevated in the same direction or pushed in the same direction. Whereas in cases of expensile pulsation, when you place two fingers on the swelling, both these fingers will be pushed in different directions or the fingers will diverge away from the swelling. The second difference is that in cases of transmitted pulsation, you can make the pulsation disappear if you can move the swelling away from the artery. Whereas in cases of expensile pulsation, the swelling originates from the arterial wall so you cannot disappear the pulsation. Then there will be certain swellings which will be visible with peristalsis and few swellings will show movement on deglutination and on perfusion of the tongue there will be movement of certain swellings such as the cases of thyroglossal cyst. Then observing the skin over the swelling, if the swelling is inflammatory in origin then the swelling will be red and edematous. In cases of sebaceous cyst, a black punctum over the cutaneous swelling will be present. In cases of a nevi or a mole or repeated exposure to x-ray, pigmentations will be present in that swelling. If the swelling is because of this, then surgical linear scar with suture marks will be present. 
such as in cases of injury where the regular scars are present or in cases where there is previous separations the swelling will be puckered or broad and irregular on palpation temperature on the skin of the swelling should be noted it may be increased due to excessive vascularity of the swelling or due to infection or well vascularized tumor such as in cases of sarcoma and the temperature should be checked by placing the back of the finger on the skin the second is presence of pain or tenderness so tenderness should be checked if the patient complains of pain when the clinician exerts pressure on the swelling in cases of inflammatory swelling the swelling will be mostly tender and in cases of new plastic swelling it will be mostly non tender then size shape and extent of the swelling should be noted by palpation one can have the idea about the deeper dimensions of the swelling and it is good to measure the swelling in centimeters and should be sketched on history sheet indicating the position of the swelling the size of the swelling should be measured from the greatest dimension of the or the greatest diameter of the swelling then checking the surface of the swelling on inspection it may be difficult to have a clear idea about the surface of the swelling certain idea may be obvious and diagnostic example the cauliflower like appearance of the surface in cases of squamous cell carcinoma and it is necessary that the swelling should be palpated with the help of a palmar surface of the finger so these are few examples of the type of surface in the various type of swellings so in cases of a cystic swelling the surface will be smooth in cases of lipoma the swelling will exhibit surface of a lobular and smooth bumps then in cases of matted lymph nodes the swelling is nodular and in cases of carcinoma irregular and rough surface of the swelling will be present now checking the edges of the swelling a swelling may exhibit a clear cut defined edge or it may be indistinctive from the surrounding surfaces so in cases of a neoplastic and chronic inflammatory swelling a well defined margin will be present of the swelling in cases of a benign growth smooth margins will be present in cases of malignancies irregular margins will be exhibited by the swelling and in cases where there is acute inflammatory swelling ill defined or indistinctive margins are present the margins are palpated by the tip of the fingers and the swelling with well defined margins will tend to slip away from the fingers the most important finding that differentiates benign tumor from the cystic swelling is that the margins of the benign tumor will slip away from the palpating finger but in cases of the cystic swelling it will not yield to it so this is the picture which demonstrates the slip sign so in the first figure if you see when the edge of the swelling is palpated with the tip of the finger the margin of the solid swelling does not yield to the palpating finger and it slips away from it but in second case that is the case of the cystic swelling when the edge of the swelling is palpated with the tip of the finger the edge yields to the pressure of the palpating finger and does not slip away so here you can see there is a slight depression which will be formed on the edge so this means that this swelling is yielding to the palpation whereas in the first case the swelling is not yielding then the consistency of the swelling should be looked for because this consistency can vary from very soft consistency to very hard depending upon what type of the swelling it is and in cases of uniform consistency it gives clue as to which anatomical structure the swelling is derived from for example in cases if the consistency of the swelling is soft it gives the hint or indication towards lipoma in cases of cystic consistency cyst or an abscess may be present the swelling could be because of the cyst and abscess if the consistency is firm the origin is due to the fibroma and hard but yielding swelling is indicative of chondroma and bony hard swelling is indicative of or suggestive of osteoma stony hard swelling is suggestive of carcinoma so for palpating the consistency we look for whether the swelling is getting molded or not to the pressure then this indicates the pulpaceous or putty like material 
or in cases if the swelling pits on pressure it means that it is edematous in nature or it is due to inflammatory origin then we will see for fluctuations so the fluctuations will be present when it, the swelling contains gaseous content or the liquid content and in order to test whether the swelling is fluctuant or not this is done by placing one finger of each hand on the edges of the swelling then certain pressure is applied to one pole of the swelling so this will cause the increase in pressure within the cavity that will transmit equally at right angles to all the surfaces which will eventually lead to passive disc or finger placed over the opposite pole if this happens then it means that the swelling is fluctuant so here is the demonstration for how to check fluctuations in the first figure as you can see it is shown as how a small swelling may be displaced as a whole by displacing fingers so d refers to the displacing finger and w refers to the watching fingers so after a pressure is applied by the displacing finger if the swelling shifts towards the watching finger to elicit a false sensation of fluctuation even when the swelling is a solid one in the second figure which is the correct method of eliciting fluctuation in cases of small swelling so two fingers of the left hand or the watching fingers will be placed on the two sides of the swelling and the index finger of the right hand that is the another hand which is also referred to as displacing finger in this case is pressed on the swelling to displace the fluid within the swelling so if the fingers are displaced then this would mean that the swelling is fluctuant and for checking the fluctuations the test should always be performed in two planes at right angle to each other two fingers should be placed as far as possible as the size of the swelling will allow and in cases of freely movable swelling it should be held fixed with a thumb or a four finger of one hand swelling is compared on other pole by a thumb and a finger of another hand in cases of testing for a small swelling it should be performed by simply pressing the swelling at the, its center swelling containing fluid will be soft at its center and the swelling which contains fluid will be soft at its center as compared to the periphery which is also called as paget's test and for larger swelling more than one fingers of both hands may be used sometimes the soft swellings may yield false positive sense or false positive result for fluctuation test example in cases of lipoma myxoma soft fibroma and vascular carcinoma so in this cases the swelling will yield to pressure but it will fail to expand in other parts of the swelling next fluid thrill test should be done in this on one end of the swelling percussion is done with the help of fingers swelling is tapped on one pole and a fluid wave is conducted from that pole to another pole in cases where the swelling is containing fluid then presence of translucency of the swelling which means that the swelling can transmit light through it so if the swelling is translucent it means that it contains either clear fluid such as water serum lymph plasma or highly refractile fat checking for the reducibility of the cyst this means that the swelling can reduce and ultimately disappear sometimes when pressure is applied upon it example in cases of hernia and lymph varics then compressibility should be checked which means that swelling can be compressed but it will not disappear completely and compressibility will be present in swelling occurring due to vascular malformations in arterial venous capillary and lymphangioma the pulsatility of the swelling should be checked that we have read earlier that is if the swelling is arising from artery it will exhibit expansile pulsation or if it lies very close to an artery then it will exhibit transmitted pulsation or if the swelling is very vascularized in nature such as in cases of telangiectic sarcoma so pulsatility is checked by placing two fingers one from each hand on the swelling as far as possible or as far as the swelling would allow and we have read earlier how to check the pulsatility of the swelling by it will be done by placing two fingers on the swelling so with every throb of the artery if the fingers rise but do not separate it is a transmitted pulsation 
and if there is separation between the two fingers with every throb of the artery then it is an expensile pulsation next with the reference to swelling vexity to overlying skin should be checked swellings that originate from the skin example papilloma and sebaceous cyst an invariable movement along with the skin unless they are fixed to the underlying structure by malignant infiltration example in cases of epithelioma or subjacent swelling if attached to skin or not following test can be done that the skin is made to move over the swelling if it is fixed skin will not move and in cases if the swelling is not fixed to the skin then the overlying skin can easily be pinched the relation of the swelling should be checked with the surrounding structures surrounding vital structures the proximity to any artery or nerve state of regional lymph nodes should be taken into consideration as no examination of a swelling is complete without examination of the draining lymph node so local examination of the lymph node should be done by inspection in which the number position size and surface of the lymph nodes are checked then the skin over the swelling is checked palpation is done for checking the number of the lymph nodes the situation of the lymph nodes local temperature tenderness surface margins and consistency so checking the consistency the normal lymph nodes without enlargements are not palpable and the type of consistency that is associated with lymph node is in cases of enlarged lymph nodes soft fluctuating consistency will be present elastic or rubbery consistency is present in cases of hodgkins diseases discrete lymph nodes are present in cases of syphilis and stony hard lymph nodes are present in cases of secondary carcinoma the lymph nodes should be checked if they are matted or not in cases of tuberculosis acute lymphadenitis and metastatic carcinoma matted lymph nodes are present then fixity of the surrounding structures should be checked if the lymph nodes are fixed to the skin or the underlying structures such as the bone so if there is fixity of the surrounding structure this is indicative and suggestive of carcinoma now in this part of the video we will see what are the position of different lymph nodes and how they are palpated pre auricular lymph nodes are palpated in front of the ear the posterior auricular lymph nodes are palpated behind the ear and the mastoid lymph nodes are palpated superficial to the mastoid process for the occipital lymph nodes it is palpated at the base of the skull posteriorly the tonsillar lymph nodes are located at the angle of the mandible the submandibular lymph nodes lie midway between the angle of the mandible and the tip the submental lymph nodes will be present in the submental region the anterior and superficial cervical lymph nodes are palpated in front of and overlying the sternomastoid muscles respectively the anterior cervical lymph nodes are palpated in front of the sternomastoid muscle and the superficial cervical lymph nodes will be palpated overlying the sternomastoid muscle deep cervical lymph nodes are present beneath the sternomastoid muscles and they can rarely be palpated the supraclavicular lymph nodes are palpated deep within the angle formed by the sternomastoid muscle and the clavicle the significance of supraclavicular lymph node is that few lung and abdominal cancers may metastasize to these lymph nodes which are also called as virchow's lymph nodes and hence they can these cancers can be discovered during the examination the infraclavicular lymph nodes will be palpated on the underside of the clavicle then in this picture the posterior cervical lymph nodes will be palpated between the anterior edge of the trapezius and the posterior edge of the sternocleidomastoid while asking the patient to turn his or her neck on the opposite side so this was a quick review of how lymph nodes of various regions should be palpated this was all about the history taking and the diagnosis making in cases of oral surgery this is a wrap for now i'll see you in the next video until then bye bye and take care